Alright, so today we're gonna talk about a very important but less well-known numbers. We call it Stirring Numbers. What's up YouTube? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe. So today we're gonna talk about really important number in combinatorics and discrete mathematics. We call them stirring numbers. There are two types of stirring numbers, stirring number of first kind and second kind. And to find out what they are, let's get to work. Alright, so what are stirring numbers? So first of all, so first thing you have to know is there are two types of stirring numbers. We call it there are two kinds. And those two kinds has a really fancy name. We call them of the first kind and of the second kind. We actually gonna talk about the second kind first because it's easier to understand. So all right, so what are stirring numbers of the second kind? So notation Y, we're gonna denote it by S and K, right? So it's gonna be a type of number that you have to input N and K and that counts something. It counts. All right, it counts number of ways to partition N objects. Those M objects will be different to K similar boxes. All right, it probably easiest to see by example. So let's see an example. So let's ask what is S53? So what do you want to do? So let's go back to the definition really quickly. We want to partition n objects into k similar boxes. In this case, n is 5 and k is 3. So we have 5 objects and 3 boxes. So how can we partition 5 objects into 3 boxes? So let's give those objects name. So let's say those objects are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Right? So we want to divide this guy into three boxes. So how do we do this? So what are some ways to partition? We have three boxes, right? So we can do something like we do box one contain the first three number. We can do box two contain four. And we do last box contains five. That's one way to divide these five numbers into three boxes. If I'm gonna keep writing like this, we're gonna waste a lot of time because I can have to write box one, colon, a lot of number. So I will abbreviate it as one, two, three together like this, and then you do slash four slash five, like this. And one of the most confusing concepts about SNK or Sterling number of a second kind is that boxes are similar. What does that even mean? Well, it means that if you rearrange boxes without moving numbers around, you will have the same partition. So we should not count the rearrangement of the box as a new way to partition. Like for example, for example, if you want to look at another way to partition, one, two, three, four, five, and three boxes, you might be you might be like, okay, maybe box one contain just one number five, box two contain three numbers, one, two, three, and box three contain four. Alright, so that's one way to partition five numbers into three boxes, right? So this is gonna be denoted as five, one, two, three, four. And note that partitioning five numbers this way and this way are very similar, right? In the sense that this and this are just like rearranged boxes. We move one, two, three box in the middle, we move four, at the end we move five in front. In that case, we say this partition is the same as this partition. So if you count this as one of your number in S53, then you should not count this one as another one. So with that, let me count all possible way to partition five numbers into three boxes so we can count and that number will be S53. Alright, so I think these are all of them and then I'm gonna count how many of them are there. So we have 1, 2, 3, 24, 25. So S53 equal to 25. So is that the only way to count S53? Are there any nice formula that magically we can just plug number in and we get 25? 
Um, the answer is not really. So we don't have closed formula, but we have recursive formula, meaning if you know the value of something smaller, maybe if you know the value of S43 or S52, then you can use this formula to figure out the value of S53. To use recursive formula, what you would need all the time is you would need base cases. So what are base cases in this case? So we have S00 zero, zero is one, and zero is actually zero. If you have n objects, you have no boxes, then there's no way to rearrange an object into zero boxes. And then you have S N N equal to one. All right, this one is a little deeper. So let's think about this, why this is true, right? So you have n objects, you have n boxes. How do you partition n objects into n boxes? Well, it's simple, right? Because you need to fill all the boxes. Therefore, each box has to contain precisely one object, right? So you put number one in box one, number two in box two, number three in box three, all the way to n in box n. But then all boxes are the same. So there's no point of like, which box should number one goes to. So once you do that, there's only one way. All right, so we have base case and what you can use recursive formula to reduce your number down until you get one of these cases. All right, and recursive formula goes like this. So if you have S and K, it's equal to S N minus one, K minus one, plus K times S N minus one K. What you can do is you can start with whatever number you like and then you reduce that to smaller number and N gonna keep going down. So eventually n gonna go down until n will be the same value as k. So we have s n n equal to 1 or k will go down and hit 0. So if you keep going down, you're gonna get this value eventually. So let's use this formula to get the value of s53. Alright, so we're gonna compute s53 using recursive formula together. So what is f53? So S53 is the same thing as S42. The first term you reduce both n and k, so 5 become 4, 3 become 2, and then you put the 3 as the coefficient of the second term. Right, so 3 goes here, and the second term you reduce only the first number, you only reduce the n by 1. So 5 become 4 plus 3 is still as, stay as 3. So this just say in order to know the value of S53, you want to know S42 and S43. All right, so what do we do next? We use recursive formula for S42 and S43. So S42, so the first guy will be S31 because four become three, two become one, and then you put two in front, and then you reduce only four, S32. S31 will be the same as S20 plus one S21, and this, that will be zero, right? Because S anything zero is zero except S zero zero. And now we just need to know S two one. S two one will be S one zero plus S one one times one, right? And this we know the value of both of them, right? So all in all, S two one, we figure out that it's one. And now you plug it back in here. So S three one will be one as well. And then you plug this guy back in here. So S31 is 1. And you keep doing this, right, using the recursive formula. Eventually, you're going to solve for S32. You plug it in here. You get S42. And then you plug it back here. And then you figure out S43. All right. And to do that, I'm just going to do it really quickly. And I'll see you in a bit. So now we figure out that S42 is 7. Now we just need to figure out S43. All right, for S43, this is easy because it's S32 plus 3, S33. But then both of this we know because S32, we figure out on the line before that is 3. So this guy is 3. And S33 is 1 by base case. So S43 will be 6. So this will be 6. So all in all, S53 will be 7 plus 3 times 6. So 7 plus 18 which is 25. 
All right, so even though we don't have closed formula for our SNK, we can compute some special value. All right, let's start off with easy one, SN1. All right, what is SN1 when N at least one? So think about this for a second. What would SN1 be based on our definition? And I give you maybe five seconds. All right, and if you say the answer is one, you are correct, right? Simply because you have n objects and you have one box, how to partition n objects into precisely one box? You have one way is to put all those n numbers into that box. So that's just one way. All right, so let's do another one. Sn n minus one. So this one is a little tougher. So pause the video here if you want to give it a try on what the answer is. But if you're ready, then here it is, s n n minus 1 is n choose 2. Alright, very interesting. Why is that the case? Think of it this way, right? You have an object, you have n minus 1 boxes. So you cannot put a lot of objects in one box because you have to fill in all the boxes. In particular, what has to happen is that since we have n objects and we just have one less of the number of boxes, then all boxes but one has to contain one number and that one box. So in order to partition n numbers into n minus one boxes, it is enough to pick this. All right, and once you pick those two numbers in the same box, everything else will be in the box by itself. So the final answer is n choose two. Now we want to partition n numbers into two boxes. Pause the video here if you want to give it a try, but if you're ready, here's the answer. It's 2 to the n minus 1, minus 1, right? So this will be a little more complicated than this one, but let me explain it to you why do we get this number. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go one by one and which box do we want it to be in. All right, so... Oh, well, we want to look at this one by one, okay? So we we'll first look at one. So number one, we have two choices, right? We can go to box one, box two, but remember those boxes are the same. So it doesn't matter which box you put number one in. So when you decide where to put number one in, you have only one choice because two boxes are the same. But afterward, it will be different because when you decide for two, you already put one in, right? You already put one in, therefore, those two boxes are now different. Alright, so we have two boxes, the box with one and the box that without one. You can probably guess what happened afterward. You, you want to look at number three, then number three has two choices too. Then you, ha you have two choices for number three as well. You put it in the box with number one or without number one. All right, so what do we have? Number one, we have one choice. Number two, we have two choices. Number three, we have two choices. Number four, we have two choices. All the way to end, we have two choices. So, at the end, all right? So this is number of choice for number one, divided number of choices for number two, for three, for four, for n. So this guy, there are two. There are n minus one of them because the first one is not the two. So it's 2 to the n minus 1. Alright, but lo and behold, this is not the final answer because among all 2 to the n minus 1 choices, there is one invalid choice. And that choice is when you put all the number in the box with number 1. Why would that not work? Well, that because if you put 2, 3, all the way to n with the box with number 1, then the first box, the box with number 1, will contain 1, 2, 3, all the way to n, and the second box will be empty. So that's not how you partition n into two boxes. That's how you partition n into one box. So that doesn't work. It's just 2 to the n minus 1, minus 1. Alright, so that's all I want to talk about. Storing number of a second kind 
of course there's so much more we can talk about there's a formula that you can get from inclusion exclusion principle there's a generating function for it there's a lot of application but if you want to know more there's going to be another video for another day for now let's move on to the starting number of the first kind i'm gonna talk about this guy no i'm kidding i'm gonna talk about something else first i'm gonna talk about something similar to this which is Let's talk about something very similar. Let's talk about the signless stirring number of the first kind instead of stirring number of the first kind. And the reason I want to talk about this guy first because this is weird. This guy will be something that can be positive or negative. As a person who do a lot in discrete math, you don't want to see a lot of negative number. Like, what does it mean to have negative five ways to do something? That's just awkward, right? So we're gonna define signless stirring number of the first kind first and then we're gonna define this guy based on this guy all right so what is this guy so right we're gonna denote this by c and k so little c it defined as all right so we start off very similar so it's a number of ways to do something is number of way to partition in numbers or in objects still but instead put them into k boxes now we put them in k circles so in each group now we have some sort of structure right in the box we just throw everything in in the circle we need to rearrange them somehow just like before let's compute a small s a small c and k and see what it's like All right so let's compute c52 okay so how do we do this? Okay, so we have five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and what can we do? We can do something like this. Circle one maybe contain one, two, three. So we do like one here, two here, three here. And circle two, four, five. And so that's one way. The thing to note is that just like storing number of the second kind, you can rearrange boxes, but you still get the same partition. Now there are a number of things you do. You can do to rearrange or modify this arrangement, but you still get the same arrangement. So circles are identical, meaning if you just rearrange the circle, you will get the same result. So you do like one, two, three, four, five. That will be the same as. That would be the same as 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. There's no such thing as circle 1, circle 2. If 4 and 5 together and 1, 2, 3 together this way, this arrangement will be count as the same as this guy. All right. And the second thing that you may mention is the significance of this being a circle. If you rotate this table around, you should get the same arrangement. All right. So for example, if you do 1, 2, 3 here, Four, five, and maybe you decide I don't want to put one here I want to put one here and then put two here put three here then you end up with something like one two three four five so you end up with one two three four five here so this look different from here right because the top number here is one the top number here is three but we consider these two arrangement to be the same simply because from the point of view of one he has two on his left, he has three on his right. And look at this guy. He has two on his left, he has three on his right. From the point of view of one, these two arrangements are the same. And that applies to all the numbers in here. So all in all, these two arrangements are the same. Alright, so just like before, we don't want to write this um, notation. Every time we write arrangement for C and K, we're going to abbreviate it like this. One, two, three. 1, 2, 3 together and 4, 5 together and I put parentheses out 1, 2, 3 so we know that this is kind of like we put it around a circle and 1, 2, 3 in this order because if you start with 1 you go clockwise you get 2 and 3 and then you start with 4 you get clockwise you get 5 so if you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this this is gonna read something like 3, 1, 2, 4, 5 and what I just said was that these two are the same, all right? 
and with this I'm gonna list out everything for C52 all right so here we go I think I done with all possibilities for arrangement where you divide into circle of three and circle of two. Now I just have to count all circle of four and circle of one. So here we go. All right, I think that's all arrangement for C52. So let's count. So we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 8, 49, 50. So since I see 50 ways to arrange 5 numbers into 2 circles, C52 equal to 50. Alright, so another thing that um, you can learn about sign registering number of the first kind is recursive formula. And it goes like this. C and K. The first term is C n minus 1, K minus 1, just like stirring number of the second kind, but the addition part goes like this. So you have n minus 1 times C n minus 1 K. All right, and initial condition are the same. So C n n equal to 1 and C 0 0 equal to 1, but C n 0 equal to 0 for all n at least 1. Alright, so let's conclude this video by telling you what is the actual definition of the stirring number of the first time. So we denote by little s n k, right? And here's the definition. So you define this guy, s n k, based on this guy. And the definition goes like little s n k is nothing but minus 1 to the n minus k times c n k. Alright, so what is this nonsense? So first of all, if you just look at a number, s n k will look pretty much like c n k. But we introduce possibly minus sign here. So it's minus 1 to the n minus k. So it depends on n minus k, right? If n minus k is pot, if n minus k is even, then this will be plus sign. So s and k will be the same as c and k in the case when n minus k is even. Otherwise, this will be odd and this will be minus sign. Right? So for example, s of 5, 2 equal to minus 1 to the 3, c 5, 2. We learned before c 5, 2 is 50. Minus 1 to the 3 is minus 1. So it's minus 50. Which is something, again, it's unpleasant, right? You see, S is the number of the first kind. We kind of hope that this is the number of ways to do something, but we get negative number, which is weird. It's number of ways to do something, but like it's negative, right? And the reason that we need to have minus 1 to the n minus k is because of a little algebra behind that um, you define this way, then certain number of the first kind and certain number of the second kind is some sort of inverse of each other in the world of linear algebra. If you, know, if you want to know more about that, I can definitely tell you, but that's gonna be for another day. All right, that's all I want to talk about today. I know this video is a little long, but even this long video, I didn't get to cover everything about certain numbers. So let me know down below if you want to know more about certain numbers of both kinds. Also, if you want to see some application, let me know in the comment section and if you're interested, I can make another video about it. But for today, thank you so much for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching Enchus K. Peace!